Hey everybody, this is Scott Grammer and I'm the Old Audio Guy and what you're looking at is a Pioneer CTF9191 cassette deck and I want to show you a couple of interesting features it has uh, before I actually begin repairing it. Uh, this unit is here because it will not rewind or fast forward correctly. Uh, that is the complaint. I actually haven't gotten as far as checking it out. I've only gotten as far as doing a cleaning on the pinch roller capstan and heads. And I want to show you what I had to do to do that. In order to clean the pinch roller and capstan on a cassette deck, you need the machine to be in play mode. You need the capstan spinning and the pinch roller running so that you can clean the GAC off of them. Uh, now, a lot of cassette decks have what's called a presence switch, uh, which in this case is this little push button right here. That tells the machine that there is a tape loaded into it and that it can take off and run. And most cassette decks have just one presence switch. One is enough. However, this one has two. So you have this one. And then if we tilt this up, this latch right here is also connected to a switch. And if I flip the door away so that you can see the micro switches, it actuates this micro switch right, right here. By the way, if you're in a Pioneer uh, cassette deck and you see these micro switches on top uh, the 9191 has them all of the floor scan decks like the CTF 900 and 950 have them just go ahead and replace these uh, they do fail and when they fail they usually fail intermittent and it can be very frustrating and what will happen especially if a present switch like this one is what fails the machine will be humming along merrily and all of a sudden it'll just stop and there will be no indication as to why. It will be just as if you had pressed the stop button. And it's because this switch has become intermittent. So these are inexpensive. Uh, you can still get the original switches or you can get uh, reproductions made in China and they work just fine. Um, just go ahead and replace them. So anyway, back to the present switch. Not only do you have to press this in and hold it, but you have to reach in here and push this up before it will go into play. Now once you do that, you can release this present switch, the one that I showed you first, that one. But if you let go of the other one, that's what happens. So there's that. I want to show you one other thing. If we rotate it around, here's the power transformer. Now if you notice, the power transformer is set at an angle. It's not parallel with the back panel. It's set about five degrees off. And there's a reason for that. Uh, that was not done by accident. Uh, in fact, in some tape decks, you will see that there are a circle of holes in the chassis so that the transformer can be rotated between those holes and sit in the position that the manufacturer likes best. And there's a reason for all of that, and that is that the power transformer, as you might imagine, radiates a magnetic field, which the head of the tape deck can pick up and it will reproduce it as hum through the speakers. But this magnetic field has certain null points, certain nodes where there is almost no radiation. And the manufacturer knows this and they have found in this case that if they turn the transformer about five degrees this way, it puts the head of the tape deck in a null point so that it picks up almost no hum whatsoever from the transformer. And if you turn this transformer in any direction, the hum will get louder. So that's what they've done, is they've minimized the hum pickup of the tape deck by rotating the power transformer. That's enough for now. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.